اها كده كيف اتصلحوا ولا لسه يا بروف كده افضل الحمد لله اتفضل اوكي طيب 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 بسم الله نبدا المفروض نبني على البرنسبلز اوف ليرنينج اللي اخذناها يوم السبت والمحاضرة المسجلة اللي هي اسمها uh, The Rules of the Teacher فدارين نمشي خطوة إضافية uh, عن حاجة concept اسمها The Learning Approaches and Situations Learning Approaches and Situations The Learning Approaches and Situations ده uh, concept مهم جدا uh, We need to address فبسم الله uh, حن, 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 المحاضرة هتكون فيها ثلاثة أجسام an introduction then definition what learning approaches uh, what do they mean and what are they and then the learning situation what are they and what they mean uh, and by the way these are the terms introduced by professor Ronald Hardin من زمان يعني فرق في كتابه هو وجون دينت practical guide to medical teachers إنه يسمي الأشياء كذا بأسماء عشان الناس تتفقوا عليها فقال في approach الفرق بين situation و approach وده حنتكلم عنه بعد شوية في المقدمة في الأول إنه كل any institution or all institution institutions education institutions they need to determine uh, the learning approaches and the learning situations their faculty are going to use على أساس إنه يوروا التوجه بتاعهم يعني يعني what do they advocate يعني شنو approaches approaches are the general directions or learning strategies برضو حتلاقيكم المصطلح دي حتى البيبر باي رونالد هاردن هم سماها the learning strategies وفي خلط كبير جدا بين learning strategies وبين learning methods or methodologies وبين uh, teaching strategies عشان كده نحن عندنا we have one in the forums one of the uh, topics to be discussed حاجة اسمها classroom teaching and learning strategies teaching and learning strategies ف, ف, ف حكاية ال classroom حاجة وحكاية ال institution حاجة يعني when we say these are the learning strategies adopted by the by our institution we need to agree the most important uh, learning uh, strategies our learning approaches model the spices model we will be introduced to it لكن later on لما نجي لموضوع الكوريكولم هنتطرق له مرة تانية بالتفصيل فعشان كده دي ده تعريف مهم جدا جدا إنه what are these learning strategies or approaches the other which is uh, the other term which different identifies the learning situations these are settings made available for learners to enable them to achieve the outcomes يعني أنا بهي بيئة in which the learner can uh, achieve their outcomes بسميهم learning situations uh, في other alternative uh, terms لsituations الترم الأول بسموها in addition to situations learning experiences learning experiences هتلقى في papers مكتوبة من أهمها الكونسبت بتاع الـ High Impact Learning Experiences في حاجة اسمها كده High Impact Learning Experiences وفي حاجة اسمها High Impact Learning uh, Situations فإذا المصطلحين ده المصطلحين الثاني في حاجة اسمها Learning Opportunities يعني if, if you allow the students to go for a placement in the outpatient clinic Uh, they, this is an opportunity for them to learn. It's a more learning opportunity. If you plan it, it's more activities. Plan learning activities. Activities are anshit or ta'alimiya. But isn't these are يعني, uh, interchangeable terminologies for learning uh, situations. 
المفروض any faculty who is going to deal with uh, learners they need to have some satisfactory knowledge about the various learning approaches and learning situations. حتلقى papers كتير chapters in books ياخدوا لك learning situations دي ويقولوا لك what is the definition, what is the description, uh, what are the advantages and what is the uh, disadvantages. Uh, ومهم جدا انتو كeducators يكون عندكم sufficient uh, or satisfactory knowledge لانه you might hear some people attacking some of these learning situations. يعني people speak negatively about the lecture. Uh, well, the lecture has got advantages and has got disadvantages depending on how you utilize uh, uh, the lecture. And طبعا next week, at uh, the beginning of next week, we will, st- we will uh, deal with uh, lecturing. Either in the highest my learning approaches and learning situations, the learning approaches I know أكتر اللي هي learning strategies when we do the practical group work. Like what are the learning situations? أول حاجة بالنسبة للapproaches معلش دي جات نحن الآن دي كانت المقدمة الآن أنا هتكلم عن الapproaches described in Professor Hardin's paper. Uh, in, in, in the recent decades, في كل literature بتاعت education in general or medical education in particular, people moved away from teacher-centered emphasis to student-centered emphasis, emphasizing on uh, situations, activities, experiences, opportunities in which students learn helped by teachers, not the teachers actually teach the students. Sankida, recently literature is speak about learning rather, rather than teaching and instruction. So even they moved away from the teacher center. وبالتالي, this, uh, this approach or strategy is uh, student-centeredness, one of the main uh, innovative uh, learning strategies. Uh, uh, a recent medical education publication school they describe this uh, student centeredness wa other approaches and and student centeredness uh, enables uh, the learners to acquire professional competencies and attributes yani it's not only the knowledge yani when you use a student centered approach or strategy uh, the, the learners are going to acquire other professional competencies and attributes uh, including critical thinking, problem solving, communication, leadership, beautifulness, uh, teamwork, and collaboration. All of these can be uh, acquired when the students, when the institution utilize the, stu- the student centeredness approach. Now, uh, Professor Hardin identified six uh, innovative and synergistic and interdependent approaches are used in medical education. And he described them in his SPICES model, Alihuma, the student-centeredness, or problem-based learning, or integration, or community-based education, or elective-driven curriculum, or systematic delivery of content. Even these are the six, the beginning of these six words, S P I C E S spices. We somehow the spices model of medical education, اللي هو a strategy based model. لأنه في design based model في different models. هنتطرق نتطرق لهم إن شاء الله when we come to uh, curriculum design and, and, and review. So then he identified these six uh, approaches or strategies. وطلع الموديل بتاعه and he advocated. People يعني, to move away from teacher-centeredness with the student-centeredness من the information-oriented um, curriculum, the presentation, or problem-based uh, curriculum من the discipline-based يعني anatomy, physiology, وما إليه إلى the integrated or the interprofessional من the hospital-based, the community-based من the uniform مرتب كده the elective-driven يكون في flexibility ومن opportunistic the systematic وهو قال الناس تتحرك away from this from the right side to the left side to move towards the spices model زي ما قلت لكم نحن اليوم في الجروب ورك 
by the way, هنقسمكم كوم لي 6 جروبس جروب حتاخد ال student centeredness جروب حتاخد ال presentation based uh, or problem based PBL و جروب حتاخد ال integration او ال interprofessional جروب حتاخد ال community based و جروب حتاخد ال elective driven و جروب حتاخد ال systematic now you will find a link to a box يعني you click on the link it will take you to the box uh, all six folders are found in that box but you can choose for now to download uh, the papers or the documents in the folder relevant to the your assignment and it in the PBL if the whole folder title problem based learning and they download the papers and they study them in, during uh, the group work even in conclusion we have six main uh learning approaches and learning or, or strategies identified by prof harden and he published them as uh as a spices model now Anna, i said that they are interrelated and synergistic for example mobile integration relevance the students appreciate the need for the basic learning for their future work. Isn't in some correlation and relevance. When the collaboration working within and beyond the College of Medicine to keep the education of physicians as pri uh, primary. But find that even um, integration is one of the issues that is, that is important. And uh, the slide yet previously and I spoke about it but well, again this is the right place for it in uh, the student centeredness concept and uh, in the uh, student centeredness is independent learning uh, and these are approaches that use activities which promote active learning فنحن, um, student centeredness uh, approach active learning is actually a, 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 a strategy that emphasizes uh, students being actively engaged in their learning. But the student said that there's something and uh, uh, active learning is part of, of a student center because student centeredness makes um, um, it's not only the activities but includes also their role in curriculum design in course design they give their feedback so this is a student-centered uh, environment uh, 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 but active learning is is just pa part of it uh, and this um, uh, student-centeredness usually employs directed self-learning and self-directed learning and we need to differentiate when we say directed self-learning it's self-learning but it is directed by the institution or or the um, teachers while the self-directed learning it is the learning is self-directed so the learner determines what where how and, uh, and, and uh, they learn they control their learning while although they are self-learning under the directed self-learning issue uh, or approach now the it is called directed self-learning they are self-learning, but they are directed to self-learn. Now, this is student-centeredness, whether it is directed or self-directed, self-directed self-learning or self-directed learning, while well, active learning in the classroom, synergizes with the other approaches of the SPICES model. Yani in problem-based learning, we utilize the student-centeredness. And in uh, what is the other approach? Uh, problem-based learning is an approach. It synergizes with student-centeredness. Integration synergizes also with uh, active um, uh, student-centered learning. Uh, Community-based education also synergizes with um, uh, student-centered. So they all work in synergy. Now, the activities that promote active learning, I mentioned that already, including seminars, tutorials, a flipped classroom, and peer-assisted learning, these are student-centered activities student-centered activities yeah, I mean, that promote active, active learning. 
Now, a student centeredness means you as a teacher need to move from a sage on the stage to a guide by the side. وفي كتب اتكتبت في هذا الموضوع إنه a sage on the stage is 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 the uh, past, the future, the, the 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 current and the future are uh, student centeredness. فعند a sage on the stage, we begin to Uh, you give a lecture or even in the tutorial you give a mini lecture you are a sage on the stage but you need to be a guide by the side they are learning and they are help you are helping uh, them learn you move from an information provider to a facilitator you move from a student uh, uh, information provider to a facilitator a guide by the side so Uh, instead of being a lecture and using the traditional didactic classroom setting, you use uh, you you become a guide by the side while the students are learning in the different uh, uh, setting. Now this is about the first uh, approach or strategy, which is as uh, a student centeredness. Uh, now problem based learning. Uh, uses a student a student centered and independent learning um, using in which a problem or a case or a presentation and uh, when we say a case a case means uh, I, I'm dealing with a clinical condition or a clinical presentation I can give you a case but I, I give you cough cough and ask I use it as a trigger for learning. And this is called problem or case-based learning. Later on, we are going to address this issue uh, again. Now, this approach, this problem-based learning approach, enables the students to, to learn actively. So you see, they are also employing a uh, student-centeredness, active learning approach, and the students are engaged. So they are engaged in their own uh, uh, learning. And they are also built on what they already know. And this is why it is experiential learning. It is based on what you learn through your experience before, during, and after uh, in encountering or exposure to the case or the problem. And, and then uh, we use we, uh, this problem-based learning uh, will uh, allow them to appreciate the relevance to their future role or future work A local correlation, I, 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 I mentioned it earlier. Now, this approach also enables the students to construct their own knowledge, Lua constructivism. Well, if you see at uh, these uh, uh, terms or words in brackets, they are all new or innovative trends in education, and they are all stimulated by problem-based learning and student-centeredness. And case or presentation based learning, one then an engagement, and then experiential learning, and then correlation, and then constructivism. All of these are important trends in healthcare professions uh, education. Now, traditionally, we tell the students what we what they need to know. They memorize it, and then we give them a problem to solve it based on the what they learn. So the problem is assigned to illustrate how they use uh, this learning. Well, this is just a checkpoint. This is a checkpoint to ensure. But problem-based learning, you start with a problem, the problem is assigned, and then the, the, the learners will identify what they need to know, then they learn and apply it to solve the problem. So this is the difference between the traditional uh, approach and Uh, problem-based learning approach or strategy. Now, uh, the main features of PBL, problem-based learning framework, that it is not uh, linear, but it works in multiple directions. It is non-linear. Uh, and so uh, it explores diverse avenues, diverse theories, diverse ideas and solutions. This is one feature. The other feature is that it's real It's the real world. I don't just talk to you about uh, abstract knowledge and, and issues. We, we use real world problems, relevant problems that are meaningful to the participant. And it is personalized because different students have different learning needs. 
And this is why it personalizes learning, connecting with learner, individual styles, creativity, and opportunity for extension. Uh, Problem-based learning will, uh, will give the chance for that. Now, um, but what you what you need to know uh, a guide a guide and a scaffold because it steers learners in the right direction if you guide them, and problem based learning will guide them will guide them in the right direction, uh, and you need to do that by prompting questions and provide uh, uh, resources. So you need to provide guidance in uh, the problem based learning environment. But even uh, this is PBL, it is depicted in different infograms. Uh, showing it is utility and, and process. So uh, this is the process. Uh, you select and develop um, uh, develop a problem, uh, help people, and then, um, no, sorry. Uh, it, it, it emanates from uh, exam covers content from problems, and then um, uh, you select a problem, then you set the ground rules. Uh, later on, we are going to go through that in uh in in detail and then uh you overview the context and content uh and then students give self-evaluation and peer evaluation and then we go back to the exam and the exam covers uh, the issue now this is the second and we will deal with it in detail this is the second approach or strategy we need to clarify because uh this this topic this lecture is about uh, what are the learning approaches and strategies? And what are the learning situations, experiences, or opportunities? We need to differentiate. We don't say problem-based learning, it's a learning activity or methodology. No, it's an approach. And the approach will use the learning situation known as the tutorial. I will describe this again later on. Now, the third important, very important, is uh, approach or strategy is integration. There is a lot of research evidence indicating that learning in an integrated fashion improves two things. Improves consolidation and, and cons uh, acquisition and consolidation and also retention. So when you are actively in involved using a problem, you learn better, you acquire knowledge better and you consolidate it and the, and the students retain. It, it's not lost easily. So all the research evidence in, in, in indicates that integration will uh, improve acquisition, consolidation, and retention. Now, it could be done, this integration could be done at the basic sciences level, or, and we call this horizontal integration. If, for example, we as anatomists teach something called functional anatomy, we teach uh, radiologic anatomy, we teach clinical anatomy. So, this means we are integrating horizontally the basic science between anatomy and physiology. This is called horizontal integration. Or when we teach, for example, jaundice, it is not only the clinical aspect, which is vertical, but we are also combining the anatomy, the structure, and the biochemistry, and bilirubin and all of that. So, Basic sciences uh, together, it's called horizontal integration. But if we integrate basic sciences with clinical sciences or between clinical sciences, the one between basic sciences and clinical sciences is called vertical in uh, integration. And if it is between clinical sciences, between the clinical sciences, then it is horizontal and vertical at the same time. If it is between the various health sciences, then it is interprofessional rather than integration. Now, this could be in the form of integrated courses, the organ system courses, or in the form of integrated activities. And you have a problem-based learning tutorial, and in that problem-based learning tutorial, you address different issues, whether horizontal integration or vertical integration. And this is called an integrated activity. Now, there is an integrated course in which we address the different uh, subjects or different disciplines in the same course, and this is called integrated uh, courses. Both of them are, are required. So we bring these things together to make the lab. We integrate. Now, this is the vertical curriculum, and it's called integration. 
باي فور فور اكزامبل اللي هم البيزك ميديكال ساينسز والكلينيكال ساينسز والسوشيو هيومن ساينسز هيومانستيك ساينسز والبوبيوليشن هيلث ساينسز اللي هو البابليك هيلث يعني ورننج لونجيتيودينال ويذ ذيم ويل هاف ذا هيلث إلنس بروسيس So this is called, uh, this is integration of the sciences. This is an integrated curriculum of UCL. They have uh, the foundation of clinical science one foundation. These are uh, integrated, they are integrated horizontally, but there is, uh, they are also integrated with some uh, issues running uh, vertically. So this is called, this is the UCL curriculum university. Uh, college uh, London. The, the approach of, of a spiral is also comes into uh, play here. You start from structure, then you go to function, uh, revisiting the structure, and then you go to disease and therapeutics, revisiting the structure and function, and then you go to core clerkships and electives, revisiting all of these, and then you go to advanced core clerkships and electives. So this is called the foundation phase then the clinical phase, then the differentiation of it. So there are many, many diagrams illustrating this issue of integration, and it's a very important concept. You need to study it carefully, and then you try to apply it. The fourth approach or strategy is community-based education. And, and this is important. There are uh, conflicting terminologies. Uh, people confuse between community-based education and community orientation. And there is a third term which makes the confusion even more, which is uh, community or uh, social uh, accountability and responsibility. So what is community-based education? If the students learn in the community, the students learn in the community, while Community orientation, it means we are uh, teaching and learning issues relevant to our community. This is community orientation. But there, there is an overlap. When you do community-based education, you address the issues in the community, and this becomes uh, also uh, community-oriented education. Community-oriented education. So this is uh, when, you, when the students learn in the community. Uh, there is debate on do we consider the hospitals a community or do we consider the health centers community or just the clinical uh, when we go for field visits and when we go for uh, rural residencies or rural uh, placements uh, is it only that called community-based education or even when they go to the hospital, when you go to the uh, primary health care centers, it is also learning in the community rather than learning in the college. So this is debatable. You have to learn about it and differentiate. I want you to differentiate two things. One of them is the difference between community-based education and community-oriented education. And the other thing, the facilities, uh, do, are they considered as uh, health care facilities? Are they considered as community-based education or just the, the field work and the rural residences are considered uh, community-based education? Now, uh, students learning in the community will have a full picture because if you just sit, learn, study in the hospital, you don't know how these people develop these diseases, how did it happen? You don't have the full picture. But if you go, and visit the, the factories, and you, you visit the market, you know, you visit the restaurants, you, you, the, the, the water um, sanitation plant. So when you visit these places, you will have a full picture about the health situation in your community, and you become community oriented. You become community oriented. Now, they will also have a better understanding of the epidemiology of disease when you uh, learn this epidemiology in the community. Now, the, and also they need to go out there and learn about the health system in, 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 in your setting. So this is also important, and this is can, can only be gained fully by, through community-based uh, education. So you need to 
visit hospitals, you need to visit uh, primary healthcare centers, you need to uh, visit uh, other centers, you need programs, the malaria program or whatever, you need to visit uh, rural hospitals and so on. So you need to have a full picture about the health system uh, in your community. So this is community-based education. Now, the fifth pillar of the SPICES model, which is one of the very important, but often ignored, uh, uh, the elective driven curriculum. And, and this is, uh, is part of the opportunity to individualize learning. Students are not learning the same thing. They, are, they have the, the common foundation, the common stem, but they have the chance to select. Uh, and this is why uh, they have different names. They, they are called electives. And they are also called student selected modules, SSMs, SSMs, the student selected modules. So the learners are given uh, the chance to select some courses offered electively. They are called the student selected modules or the SSMs. And these also make it um, um, make the learning more individualized and student uh, uh, centered. Now, some are medical. Some are medical, giving the learner the chance to go in depth in an area of interest. And this is, we call them selectives, selectives, because they are medical. Some are meant to build relevant attributes, relevant to clinical practice. For example, a health manager. It, it's, it's, it could be an elective, but it is relevant. But some are meant to, uh, for the acquisition of knowledge and skills and attitudes of interest, not directly related to medicine. And now there are the, the educators and, and institutions uh, and agencies and bodies identify some common graduate attributes that the students need to learn. How are they going to learn them? Learn them through integration and through electives. They are supposed to be integrated into our curricula, but they are also supposed to be given in the form of uh, electives. Now, the last not least, not least, but often ignored, uh, is the systematic or structured education. If you leave it to chance to opportunity, uh, this is not good. The program, the course, and all the activities are planned up front. When the students are sent to the hospital, you have a plan. What do you expect them to do? How do you expect them to, to do it? And, and, and what is the depth and breadth expected? And, and all of that. You have to plan for everything. So the learning is structured and not left to chance and opportunity. It's not left to chance and opportunity. We need to take into consideration. We need to be pragmatic and, and practical. They, they, they will not see what we want them to see in the time we want them to see it, but we will be flexible, but we will have a, a checklist of what is need, what needs to be covered when they go to clinical practice in particular. So um, you need to structure this, this education. And, and this is especially important for field training and community-based activities. You need to structure them so that you don't leave it to chance and opportunity. And, and contingency plans for what if situations are also set. If they go and they don't see, uh, the, the uh, they, they went for a rotation for a whole month, uh, expecting to see a case of appendicitis or a case of uh, gastrointestinal bleeding or whatever, and they don't see it by chance. And so what if that happens? You need to put contingency plans uh, to cover these deficiencies. Now, these are the learning approaches, the six learning approaches, the subjects of today's group work. I already loaded lots of re resources that you can use to actually study these six approaches or strategies. You will be divided into six groups. Each of you will take one of the six strategies and just produce a summary of what is written in the literature about these six uh, approaches or uh, strategies. Now we move to something different, which is learning situation. When we apply these um, six uh, strategies and approaches, we utilize learning situations to actually apply these uh, approaches. So the institution needs to identify, the institution needs to say, we are going to apply student sentence. Show me, 
which situations you are going to use that allow student-centered learning. And then you say we are going to utilize problem-based learning to some extent or to a great extent, or we are going to uh, convert all our learning situations into problem-based learning situations. So the difference then is the situations is where actually the students learn. Now, so students learn in different learning situations. Also learn uh, known as learning experiences, learning opportunities, learning activities. These are the other three names for uh, learning situations. They could be institution-based or community-based. Field visit, uh, a placement in a health center, uh, a clinical round in a hospital. These are all learning uh, situations or opportunities or experiences or activities. A lecture in the classroom, a practical session in the classroom, a practical clinical session in the simulation center or the clinical skills uh, center, they are all learning situation. Even an assignment is a learning situation, although it can be an, an, a learning situation and at the same time, an assessment activity. So learning situations are the situations in which the student learn, they gain knowledge, they reinforce knowledge, they gain skills and master it, they gain attitudes and polish these attitudes. So most of them, most of these learning situations are planned and scheduled. They are put in a timetable, in a timetable. So these, and by the way, they are called planned learning experiences. Please, 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 which is PLEs, PLEs, please or PLEs. The PLAs are the planned learning and scheduled. They can be most of them, but some are left for independent learning with some flexibility. So some are peer assisted and possibly extracurricular. Some of the activities or situations could be extracurricular activities. For example, you have uh, a bazaar, you, you have um, an activity in, in a mall, in, 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 in the field or whatever and they learn through that activity, then it's a learning opportunity or uh, experience uh, or uh, situation. Now, this plan, or please, does this planned learning experiences include, these are the, the ones planned by the institution. And these are, they are structured in a schedule or a timetable. Uh, maybe attendance of these activities is uh, obligatory. Now, some of them, in Traditional institutions are teacher or tutor led. They are led by the tutor or the teacher. But some are student led activities and they may be part of the planned learning experience. Yani, tutorial, even peer assisted learning could be planned, could be a plea. A peer assisted learning, it's, it's just between the students, but it is planned and put in the timetable. So it's a planned learning experience. Now, some of these planned learning experiences are meant for the acquisition and or consolidation of knowledge, while others are for the uh, acquisition and or mastery of skills, while also attitudinal competences can be acquired and or consolidated with knowledge of skills and activities. Knowledge and skills uh, activities. Knowledge and skills or skills activities. Now, the activities planned for the acquisition or mastery of skills are rarely isolated. They include acquisition of knowledge and they also include a acquisition of uh, attitudes. So uh, skills usually combined with knowledge and, and attitude. And all of them can be considered as planned learning experience. Now, for ex just example, just example, the knowledge learning situations include the large group sessions, like uh, the lectures, and some small group sessions like the tutorial type, the seminar type, the practical sessions, the field visits, the assignments, all of these are small, uh, usually uh, done as small groups. And these are called the small group types of uh, learning uh, situation. Now, for skills, the campus-based practical sessions, whether laboratory or in simulation centers, or in clinical skills laboratories, 
they are all called campus-based practical sessions. There are some facility-based practical sessions. If they go to the health center or they go to the hospital, then these are called facility because healthcare facilities, these are healthcare facility-based practical sessions. Now, there are field-based practical sessions, rural residencies, visits to uh, factories, to the market, to the uh, 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 Many places, people, uh, I, I mentioned water, water sanitation plant and all of this. These are called field-based practical sessions. So they are campus-based, facility-based, or field-based practical uh, sessions. Uh, uh, now, there are some independent learning planned. They are independent learning, but they are planned. And these are called directed self-learning activities, DSLs, DSLs, directed because they are put in a schedule and they are planned for, uh, th there are objectives to be achieved uh, 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 and, and so on. Some of the self-directed learning activities can also be planned. For example, um, I, I, I take the students to the simulation center and then I teach them, but I tell them that this simulation center will be left, kept open uh, through the whole week. You can come anytime you like, you can learn anything you like. So this is self-directed learning. It is not directed self-learning, but can also be planned. So there can also be planned learning experience. And these include uh, reading assignments, computer-based and online learning activities, for example, reading or interactive materials, media, etc. You you give them the you give them the menu and they take whatever they want, and this can be used as triggers for other learning activities. Yeah. For example, I give you materials, you read about them, and then you come to a flipped lecture, or I give you a pre lab, pre lab you study, and then you come uh, to the lab ready for uh, for the practical session. So these are independent learning activities that can be planned or otherwise. This is what I wanted you uh, to say. Uh, I'm sorry I said it very quickly because it's already four o'clock there, but it is, don't worry, it is a foundational lecture. When you do the group work, the first half, you will cover it tamaman, uh, the approaches and strategies. And then we will start next week dealing with the uh, the learning situations. We want you to finish this week by uh, reading about, discussing, and finish with the learning strategies and approaches, and prepare yourself for um, next week for uh, learning situations starting from large uh, group learning, uh, large group uh, activities, and then small group uh, learning situations. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, ready to answer. Thank you very much. Okay, any questions? Shukran jazeelan, Prof. Tayyib, ya shabab, ki soal. Fahim? Learning approaches and learning situations. Any question? Mati asila. سامعني يا سامعك في سؤال ولا؟ لا ما بس دار دار عمل لهم ديمونستريشن ل ذا بوكس اللي هو عشان تدخلوا على البراكتيكال سيشن بتمشوا الليرنينج مانجمنت سيستم وين هو هنا ايوه لا مش هنا بي ذا اذر ايوه آه لما تدخلوا على الليرنينج مانجمنت سيستم وتنزل تنزل تنزل كده بتلاقيك الاساينمنت اللي هي الجروب ورك هي ما اساينمنت لكن اساينمنت از جروب ورك اللي هي هتلاقيك هنا آه رولز اوف ذا تيتشر رولز اوف ذا تيتشر لا سوري مش دي هنا هنا ليرنينج ابروتشز اند استراتيجيز دي باي ذا واي Uh, mean Taisir uh, ولا Naji. Anna, I failed to, to use the link. I use the link. 
من الايمج بتقوم الصوره تختفي فبالله شوفوا الموضوع شنو لانه uh, I can demonstrate it now go to the settings وكده اول حاجه نصلح دي learning approach use strategies learning resources نشيل الايديا انا I want to link to this I click لما اقول له لينك واعمل بيستنج لللينك هنا واقول له كرييت لينك القى الصوره اختفت وظهرت لي لينك بليز تشيك وات از هابننج اند دو ات ها انا هقول له كانسل ليف ات تو يو لكن وات ديد اي بوت ذير فور ذا جروب ورك لما تدخل على هذه الاساينمنت بتاعت الجروب ورك بعد ما تاخذوا لكم بريك صغيره يعني تدخلوا على البرنسبلز اوف لا سوري دائما انا اجيب هنا في برنسبلز اوف يعني هنا ليرنينج ابروتشز اند ليرنينج سيتويشنز نفتح كده هتلقى الكلام طبعا في الاول مثلا كده 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 آه أنا عملت عملت assignment أنا لأنه ما learner ما جايبه لي لكن أنا بدخل عليها بال settings من هنا when you open it this is what you are going to see اللي هو each of the groups will consult the main document في main document هما اثنين الحقيقة عن the spices model تقروها these two main documents لأن فيها six strategies then read some publications about the approach strategy assigned to you to your group to your group and then prepare a summary about it يعني في جروب هتاخد الاس اللي هي student centeredness في جروب هتاخد problem based learning في جروب هتاخد integration في جروب هتاخد community based education واحدة هتاخد electives والاخيرة هتاخد structure education وده هنا دي طبعا انتو بالنسبة لكم هتكون clickable when you click on this it will take you to a box خلاص ده البوكس اللي هتمشوا له هتلقوا في البوكس اهي دي السبايسس موديل هيفتح لكم السبايسس موديل طوالي في فولدر على الستودنت سنتر ناس اذا فتحتوها هتلقوا فيها كميه من البيبرز ما ضروري تقروها كلها انتوا هتقروا الاساسيه آه اسمها ذا سبايسس موديل اللي هي اديوكيشن استراتيجيز اخر واحده دي اديوكيشن استراتيجيز ان كوريكولم ديفلوبمنت وفي واحدة تانية اسمها Learner Center Benefits of Outcomes Creating Student Center أيوة دي دي اللي هي اسمها The Spices 2 فهتقروهم الاثنين بعدين تختاروا من ديل anyone that you think you can benefit from before you can prepare your summary so كل مجموعة هتاخد لها فولدر من الأربع فولدرات دي وتعمل لها داونلود وتبتدي تطلع على البيبرز اند يوز ذيم فور عندكم 6 uh, فولدرز واحدة ستودنت سنترنس واحدة ستراكشر تيتشنج واحدة كوميونتي بيز اديوكيشن انتجريشن بروبلم بيز ليرنينج اند الكتيف حتى الالكتيف في كمية من الريدنج ماتيريال ذات يو كان بينيفيت فروم فيري يوسفول تو برودوس ذا سامري دي السبايسس موديل بيبر عنها وديل الاديوكيشن استراتيجيز هنا فدي الجروب ورك اي ويل ليف يو تو تو ذا جروب ورك ثانك يو سو ماتش شكرا واضح ان شاء Hello. 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 First of all, I have two questions. Uh, first question is that uh, yeah, and model is uh, divided into old, old school and new school, and the spices. Uh, is it possible to mix between them? I mean, is that we have to choose which uh, which uh, grade, which type uh, we should pick? I mean, No, I mean, I mean, oh, uh, should I always use just the new methods, new spice model here, or can I combine it with the old methods of teaching? Uh, 
لا تمام نجيب لك السلايد دي السلايد ده سؤال مهم والسلايد مهمه لوك ات ذيس سلايد يو ار يو ار بروبابلي ناو تيتشر سنتر ملاحظه في الابر رايت كود اما شيرنج عامل شيرنج ولا لا عامل شيرنج ما ظهر لنا طيب دقيقه خلينا نعمل سكيب ونعمل شيرنج في الاول شير اوكي طيب ذيس uh, سلايد كذا الان شير ده يس ناو اون ذا رايت ابر كورنر عندنا تيتشر سنتر ممكن تكون الكلية اللي انت فيها completely teacher center السهم اللي انا راس مده ده يوري انه you can move شوية من teacher center ناس ل student center لكن you can ده بسموه continuum ال continuum ده you can start very close to teacher center ناس ودي الادفايس if you are still in your institution teacher center completely teacher center You do not decide tomorrow to move all the way to student center. The teacher becomes ready, while the students become ready. So you move gradually across this continuum. Nafsal hikaya, you are now um, probably orientation, uh, information oriented, or discipline, uh, also the um, uh, information driven. But if you come to information driven, and ودار تو موف موف برضه جراديولي انتو ذيس بروبلم بيزد ليرنينج اور برزنتيشن بيزد ليرنينج يو موف جراديولي اف يو ار كارنتلي مقسمه ديسيبلينز اناتومي فيزيولوجي بايوكيمستري بيسولوجي كده ويو وونت تو موف يو موف جراديولي طبقنا الكلام ده في في جامعه النيلين وين اي واز ذير كونسلتنت هم كانوا كومبليتلي ديسيبلين بيزد وقالوا ذي وونت تو انتجريت اول حاجه عملنا كميه من السيشنز اباوت Integration. What is the difference between integration and coordination? وبعد كده we selected a couple of material. يعني عملنا لها integration. Started with the neurosciences module. جبنا الأنتم فيزيولوجي بروكيمستري باسولوجي بروسيتولوجي باسولوجي وميكروبيولوجي يعني ميونولوجي وفارماكولوجي. كلهم عملنا module integrated module. وبعدها اتحركوا شويه 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 غيروا من discipline based ل integrated curriculum. You need to study this. And so on. Now completely hospital based, yes, people select some uh, community based uh, learning situations. عشان يطبقوا this community based. So you don't need to say uh, ممكن تقول انا الان حابدا بس ب student centeredness. و community based education بعدين انا هعمل حكايه الانتجريشن والبرزنتيشن او بروبلم بيزد ده من ناحيه خيار ومن ناحيه موفمنت يو موف جراديولي يو دونت موف سادن دي واحده الاثنين لو لاحظتوا في الكلام بتاعي انهم ذي ار انتريليتد اند سينرجيستيك بمعنى يعني لو قلت انا هاخد بروبلم بيزد ليرنينج بالغصب هتبقي ستودنت سنتر ما عليك فإذا في حاجات interrelated and synergistic they, they, they synergize uh, لو قلنا نعمل integration غصب حاستعمل problem based learning لأنه it is one of the ways you which in which you use uh, 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 student center و, وأيضا problem based learning is also uh, important for uh, 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 interprofessional or integration uh, إذا The choice is yours, but when you choose one, by default, you'll be in the other one. So this is the answer to the question.